Welcome to lesson number nine on uh, sinusoidal functions. So sinusoidal functions are, um, are graphs that look like sine or, or uh, cosine curves. Um, these sinusoidal functions are uh, seen in the real world in a lot of um, different phenomena that, uh, that involve periodic functions. So things that happen um, you know, periodically. So whether it's uh, the sunrise or or the, the tides, so the depths of the tides at certain times of the day, or things that have a motion like a, like a Ferris wheel, those are all move in sinusoidal curves. So today we're gonna look at, um, yeah, at what, what these graphs look like and, and just at the functions, um, the word problems of these functions that you'll, be looking, that you'll be looking at. So in this first example, the depth of water in a harbor after midnight can be approximated by the function g of t equals 12 plus 5 cosine 0.5t, where t has to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 24. Uh, t is in hours, and so in 24 hours. And uh, d is the depth of the water in meters. So the first thing we want to do is, given this function, determine the, the maximum and minimum points. All right, so if we are looking at the, the max and min, then we're looking at my max point is 12 plus 5 times 1, one day, and that's going to be 17 meters. My minimum point is going to be 12 plus 5 times 1, and this is going to be 7 meters. We can also determine this by, by graphing the function, but uh, we'll do that after. Uh, determine the period of the function. So if I look at my period, um, this is my b value right here, cosine 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 is the b value. So my period is equal to 2 pi over b, or 2 pi over 0 0.5, which is equal to 4 pi hours. So every 4 pi hours is when we have one full cycle. Write a suitable window which can be used to display the function of the graph. Yeah, I don't know. Like this is this is cool, right? Like if you think about um, how tides work, generally speaking, you know, you you have a a high and a low at, at well, you have a high tide and another high tide every approximately 12 hours, but it's actually a little bit more, right? Four times pi, <clears throat> and that's why you don't have the exact same high tides and low tides every single day. Write a suitable window setting which can be used to display the graph of the function. So let's look at my my x windows here. Um, well we don't have to go anywhere below zero right because we're talking about one time interval to another so it doesn't make sense to have uh, any negative integers represented here. This is happening in a 24 hour span so that would be our maximum point. And it can go up by every two hours, but you could it could be every four hours for you too, or or one hour even. Uh, for my y values, it's uh, if we look at my minimum value, my minimum value is seven meters. So if we if we just leave it at zero, that'll be fine. And for a maximum value, if it's at seventeen, then we can have a y max about twenty, so we can see where that seventeen is, and this can go up every by a scale of 5 every time. But your answers can be different than mine, but this is, yeah, this is a reasonable value. So what is the depth of the water to the nearest tenth of a meter at 2 a.m.? So if t is equal to 2. Well, we could solve this algebraically, or since I already have it graphed, um, I can just graph it. But there is my sinusoidal curve. And if we type in a, a value, so x equals 2, we're at approximately 14.7 meters. And so, again, all I did there was second function trace, type in my 0. My 0 I'm looking for is 2. And this is where 2 hours is. And that corresponds to my y value 14.7, which is my, uh, my depth. 
so my depth is equal to 14.7 meters. A ship which requires a minimum of 8.5 meters of water in harbor at midnight is in harbor at midnight. By what time to the nearest minute must it leave to prevent grounding? This is one of those situations where we'll have to graph both my original equations. So graph in the y1, 12 plus 5 cosine 0 0.5x. And in y2, we're going to find where it intersects for the first time at 8.5 meters. And so here's the graph, just typed in as so, and we want to find the intersection point, this first intersection point here. So we're looking for uh, where my uh, sinusoidal curve intersects at 8.5. And then I, I choose the point in between, and I get 4.69. So this is four hours, or four o'clock. This is 4 a.m. and 0.69 of an hour. And let's see. So that was uh, point, uh, hold on a second, let's see if I can trace. So 4.69 hours. <clears throat> so that's when so x is equal to 4.6923876. So we, we're looking at when it must leave to prevent grounding, right? So we don't want it to be, we don't want the tide to be too low. Um, so 4 points, let's go point six nine two three eight seven six uh, times 60. So this many minutes, in, this, this many minutes in an hour is 41 minutes. So uh, to the nearest minute, which we'll just be 41, the ship must leave by 4.41 a.m. in order to prevent grounding. And the last question is, what is the next time to the, to the nearest necessary minute that the ship can return to the harbor? Okay, well, when the ship can return to the harbor, Go back to our graph, trace again, and look for our intersection point. So here's my next intersection point, and x is equal to 7.87. So again, we have a bunch of decimal places left over, so 7.873983, and to the necessary minute, let's see what we would have here. Uh, seven, or, uh, point eight seven three nine eight three times 60. So uh, 52 minutes, 43 seconds. Um, but if we think about, we, we, want it, we want the ship to arrive at the harbor at a safe period in time, and so if he arrives a little bit later, we know that the water level will be up, but to the necessary minute is what we're looking for. So even though it's 52.43, we can still round up to 53 to be on the safe side. So we would say in, he can return at 7.53 a.m. All right, a certain small town in Alberta, the time of sunrise for any day can be found using this formula. So t is equal to negative 1.79 uh, sine of 2 pi d minus 70 divided by 365 plus 6.3, where t is the time in hours after midnight and d is the number of, of the day in the year. So write a suitable window setting, which can be used to display the graph of the function. All right, well, let's go ahead and... We'll graph this out. <clears throat> Negative 1.79 sine of uh, 2 pi x minus 78 divided by 365. And I'm going to double bracket this stuff actually. <clears throat> so let's keep all this separate so we don't uh, get an incorrect graph. So x 
minus 78, 365 plus 6.3. All right, so these are obviously not the correct window settings. So let's think about what we'll have to change this to. All right, so um, <clears throat> we can leave it at zero. If we're thinking about the um, T is the time in hours after midnight and D is the number of the day in the year, then our x-axis is going to be um, our, our length of time. And we have 365 days in the year, so we'll, we'll count for that. And we can go up by you know, 35 or, or so. Um, that's a that's a pretty big span that we'll, that we'll be covering there. Uh, my y minimum value um, we'll leave at we'll, we'll just play around with this, but we'll, let's try two, and then we'll try a standard setting of ten, and then we'll go up by two each time, and let's see how this works. All right, so here's my my uh, my sunrise. So we sun we have we have sunrise and then it goes down and we can, and we come back up. All right, so write a suitable so our window settings that looks like that works pretty well. But so we had x was zero three sixty five and thirty five. Uh, my y settings were two ten and two. Um, in order to really find this, like we it it's helpful to find the. Uh, the maximum minimum points, right? So the maximum minimum values. If we're, uh, yeah, for for the for the equation itself, and so if we set one of these equal, if we kind of forget about the sign, and uh, use our max points and our min points, we'd have a max point of uh, negative one point seven nine plus six point three and negative one point seven nine. Um, uh, times negative one, and so this would be times one plus six point three, and so we would have eight uh, or so no, four point uh, so negative one point seven nine plus six point three, four point five one, and one point seven nine positive plus six point three. 8.09. So this, these, these numbers will help us find our um, our maximum endpoints a little more accurately. But it's pretty good. So B use the formula to determine to the nearest minute when the sun rose on May 7th, the 127th day of the year. So I have my graph here, and we want to know where it where it intersects at 127. So the 127th day of the year. And, or we can do 127. So I use my x or my, my zero function. And when x is equal to 127, y is equal to 4.96. And so that's 4.96292. And um, 0 0.96292 times 60. Is, this is 58 minutes, so 4.58 a.m. And determine the days of the year the sun rose at 7 a.m. So days of the year that sun rose at 7 a.m., um, y2 is then equal to 7. And we're looking for those intersection points. So there's two intersection points here. see where they are so <clears throat> so I chose my intersect function and now I'm just going up my graph choosing my second curve and then guessing so uh, one of them was at day 55 I round up so day 55 and this is where my next one is so my, that's my first curve Actually, let's get a little more accurate. <clears throat> and 
and then let's guess where we are. So right here. So day 55 and day 284. And day 284.